Hi everyone, for today's set, I'll be using nail forms to sculpt a plain nude tapered square set. To start off prepping, I'm gonna be using a ceramic cleanup bit to go ahead and push her cuticles all the way back. This bit I have at a speed of about seven or eight, and I'm making sure that all the pressure, all the pressure is being applied to push the cuticle up and away from the nail, and not necessarily down on the nail plate itself. You have to be careful not to create any little ridges or unevenness on the natural nail. So all of the pressure is being placed to push that cuticle up and lift any dead skin that might be lingering on the client's nail plate. Right before this part, I actually used an acrylic remover bit to take down the acrylic as much as possible. So you'll still see a little bit of lingering acrylic on the nail because I didn't do a soak off. I just filed it down nice and thin. So I'll be removing most of the acrylic afterwards with a sanding band in the next step. So once I can see that all the dead skin has been lifted off and away from the nail plate, I'll go in with a medium grit sanding band and my mandrel bit. And I'll use this one at a speed of about four. Uh, you want it to be slow enough to where if you apply too much pressure, the bit is going to stop. It's going to give you some pushback. That way you don't press down on the nail too hard. And you'll see that I'll kind of go over the parts that have acrylic a little bit more just to try to take it down a little bit more uh, than the actual nail itself. The client's nail, you don't want to file it down. All you want to do is remove shine. So if you see me going over a spot more than once, there's most likely acrylic there. And that's what I'm trying to take down a little bit. But on the client's actual nail, all we're doing is going over it very briefly to remove shine and any oil or moisture spots. But everything else, you just want to clean it up, make sure it looks nicely sanded all the way through and push the skin back like the skin on the sides. Push that back with your thumb, open up the nail plate to make sure that you get the little creases and everything near the cuticle nicely sanded. The reason we remove shine is so that the acrylic can properly adhere to the natural nail. If there's any shine, oil, or moisture in the, in the way between the nail plate and the acrylic, then it's not going to adhere properly. So we have to make sure that the nail is properly sanded, prepped, primed before we apply the acrylic. Once you're done with your sanding band, go ahead and dust off the nails and you want to take a close look, make sure that you got the full surface of the natural nail, got them all nicely sanded and um, again, double check for any moisture spots or any shiny spots, make sure you get them all. And then we're going to go in with a cuticle uh, remover or a cuticle nippers and just go ahead and gently remove the cuticle skin that's sticking up. Uh, you don't want to remove any live skin so only if it's sticking up and it's white that means that it's ready to come off it's dead skin if it's not white then it's probably live skin so you want to keep a close eye on that and be careful when you're removing the dead skin now to apply the nail forms i like to put the sticky tab on the back of the form and then open up the center tab so right here, I was checking to see if the free edge of the client's nail aligned with the nail form, and it didn't. It needed a little bit of an opening because the client did have an extended hyponychium only on the index finger. So I just cut a nice little opening before I applied the form to give her hyponychium a little bit of space. That way it fits nice and snug on the form, and it's not pushing on her skin or making her uncomfortable in any way. Once our form is in place, then we're going to go in with some Nail Prof Magic Bond Primer to uh, double prep before we start applying our acrylic. For my application, I'm gonna be using Nail Prof EMA Monomer, Nail Prof co uh, Cover Nude Acrylic, and a size 12 brush. Um, this brush does run kind of big, so it could be comparable to like a size 14, 16, and other brands, I'd say. And it is pre-crimped, so if you look at it, it's nice and flat and it's pre-pinched, so it's gonna make my application a whole lot easier. I start off by applying a very thin base. This is the base that I'm going to be pinching. So uh, the acrylic that I applied near the cuticle, I cleaned that up really well first because I don't want any acrylic to flood in my cuticle. And then I went ahead and started building the rest of the nail. Uh, the acrylic doesn't dry too fast or too slow, so it didn't run all over the form. And it didn't also dry on me while I was cleaning up the cuticle. So I had a little bit of time to go in and start to build it down so I can get it down to the number length that I wanted. So for her middle finger, I repeated the steps as far as putting the form on, except I didn't do any trim or cutting to this one because her hyponychium isn't outgrown. So this one I was able to apply the form just as is, just make sure it's nice and snug as always and that there's no room or little spaces or gaps uh, between the free edge and the nail form itself. So now again, I'll go in and start off by creating my nice thin layer, uh, my base. 
Again, this is the bead that I'm going to be pinching. I don't pinch at the end, I pinch at the beginning. So I'm just creating a nice thin layer, um, building that all the way down, making sure the cuticle is nice and clean. You don't want to get any acrylic flooded in the cuticle. And if you do, it's okay. You can clean it out before it dries. Just use the tip of your brush. Um, it's a lot easier to do with a nice flat pinched brush. So you want to clean that out and then start building it down, creating the shape and the length that you want for the nail. So bring it down to whatever number it is that you want and then also start creating the shape as well. When I do tapered square, I usually just bring it straight down, aligned with the um, the width of the client's natural nail. I don't like to build my acrylic wider than what the client's natural nail is because then it looks un unnatural. I added a second bead because it was just a little bit too thin and I wanted to make sure I have enough acrylic at my free edge area since that is the area that I'm going to be pinching. You do need to make sure that you do have enough acrylic so that the acrylic is going to actually pinch the nail and create that nice C curve for strength um, at the free edge area. So once I'm done building my second nail, usually the first nail will be ready to pinch. So I'll go ahead and apply my nail prof pinchers to start creating that nice C curve at the free edge. While the first nail that I built is pinching, the second nail is drying, and then I'll start to sculpt the third nail. Uh, by the time I'm done sculpting the third base, then I can move my pinchers on over to the second one, and so on. I'll usually do that until I complete one hand and then move on to the next hand. So I'm just repeating the same step here uh, by creating that nice thin base. And um, once that's done, then the, the middle finger should be ready and dry enough to pinch. If the nail is still too wet, if you touch it and it's like very, very moldable and it leaves a dent, then it is too soon to pinch. But usually by the time you're done building the base on the nail, it should, uh, about a minute or two should already have gone by and it should be dry enough to where you can apply the pinchers without creating any dents. So now I'll go ahead and remove the form from the first one and then switch my pinchers over to the second one. The reason I remove the form is because it's a lot easier to work once the forms are out of the way. Sometimes the forms do get in the way while you're applying your acrylic and holding the nail from underneath. So I like to remove it. That way it's out of the way and then I have a better idea um, on how thick the nail is. Sometimes the nails don't look as thick or as thin when they're on the form. And by removing it, I have a, a better visual of what the nail and my application is going to look like by the time I'm done applying. Since I already have a pre-pinched base, uh, my structure is pretty much already there. All I really have to go do is now go in and add thickness. So this is where I'll start to build like an apex, uh, which is the stress area right above the free edge. That part does need to be a little bit thicker because usually when a client does hit their nail, whether it's opening the fridge or, you know, on the car door or whatever, that's where all of the stress is going to be placed is in the, on the free edge area. So that part I do recommend having a little bit thicker just to make sure that you don't have um, breaking often. So here you'll see that I already um, switched my pincher over to the third one and then removed the form off of the second one so that now I, can, now I can go in and start building the thickness, apex, and the rest of the structure on my middle finger. And then I pretty much go on like that until I've completed all five fingers and then I'll move on to the next hand. During my application, I like to look at my nail from the sides just to make sure that I am making the nail thick enough. Uh, you don't want it to be too thin. Just in case you do over file, you do want to give yourself some wiggle room when it comes to that. Um, just because especially as beginners, sometimes we do tend to over file. So just give yourself a little bit of wiggle room. If the nail is a bit too thick, that's okay. It's much better for it to be too thick than for it to be too thin. For my base bead on the thumb, I'll usually do it in two beads just because the thumb is a lot wider. It's a little harder to get it all in one bead, so I usually start um, at the free edge and then build it down to the length, and then um, I'll go back and do the cuticle piece after. I prefer to do it this way because, again, the priority when doing the base is to make sure that you get full coverage on the free edge and on the sides because that's what's going to pinch and mold the natural nail to give it a deep C curve at the free edge. Um, so again, my priority here is to create um, my base bead and have enough coverage on the sides. Free edge, which is why I do, I'd rather do it in two beads, just to make sure that I'm not trying to get it all done in one bead and then it ends up being way too thin on the sides. However, because you're working with two beads, you do have to work a little bit faster because you don't want the first bead to start drying on you while you're still um, working on the second one. So you do have to work a little bit faster just to make sure that you're not having two different beads drying at two different paces.
Once a minute or two has passed by and that, that uh, the thumb bead is now dry enough to pinch, you want to go ahead and apply your pinchers. And I like to just reinforce it with my fingers to make sure it gets a nice deep pinch on the sides. To start my shaping, I'll use an 8080 grit hand file. Um, that's pretty coarse, but the reason why is because I do a lot of hand filing. So I want to make sure I'm using a hand file that's going to be abrasive enough to really cut through the acrylic pretty fast. That way I'm not stressing out my shoulder too much by filing a lot. I'll start off by cleaning up the spillage on the bottom, and then I'll slowly move my file up to go inwards. That way I can start shaping the sides really nice. Uh, you want to get it nice and straight and keep even pressure along the sidewall of the acrylic so that you're not rounding out the sides. You wanna keep um, even pressure along the sidewall and then have it nice and straight. You can see how I'm even using my fingers to push the acrylic nail up against the file just to make sure that I'm getting nice even pressure across the nail. I also use the face of my file to smooth out the nail from the apex down to the tip. I'll use the face of my file and just hit it across. So I'll either go um, up from the tip to the apex or from the apex down to the tip. And I'll just go alongside the entire nail to make sure that I get it all smoothed out. Um, I don't really use my e-file to smooth out the acrylic just because I feel like I get a much smoother finish with my hand file. So the only thing I'll really go in and finish up with the e-file is the cuticle area. So um, by using the 8080 grit hand file, I save myself the hassle of having to go in and smooth out the nail with the e-file. With the e if you're not used to hand filing and you're used to using the e-file, it might take you a minute to get used to using the hand file. But if you're uh, one of the people who struggle with over filing, usually that comes from doing it with the e-file. So if you tend to over file, then I recommend trying the hand filing method. And then here I'm going to go in with my, again, the same ceramic bit that I used to seal, uh, or sorry, to clean up the cuticle is the one that I'm going to be using to seal the cuticle as well. So this bit is a safety bit, so I'm able to get all up in the cuticle area. You can see it looks nice and clean, and it's not going to cut the client, and I'm able to remove any acrylic that might have spilled up in there. When I use the ceramic bit on acrylic, I'll usually have it at a speed of about 14 to 16. You want it to be a little bit faster than when you're doing it on the natural nail because you want it to cut through the acrylic. Uh, it's not going to be like when you're doing it on the skin. You want to make sure you get all up in there. And then for the sanding band, um, this is the last step I'll do before I buff. I'm just going to go in and uh, smooth out any ridges that the ceramic bit might have left. And you can reseal with the sanding band as well. And you can use the same sanding band that you use to prep if it's not worn out. And uh, for this one, I usually use the sanding band on acrylic at about a speed of 7 or 8. So aside from smoothing out any unevenness from the ceramic bit, you can go ahead and hit the rest of the nail as well. The 8080 grit file is very coarse, so it might leave very harsh file lines that might be kind of hard to buff out with a buffer. So you can use your sanding band to go ahead and just clean up the rest of the nail. That way, by the time you go into buff, you don't have to do any like very aggressive buffing to get, to get any of those file marks out. Um, this bit can also be used to remove just like any little excess bumps that might have been left over, or if you need to smooth out the tip just a little bit. The sanding band at a speed of 7 or 8 isn't going to have a whole lot of like shaving down power. It's really just to smooth out any um, unevenness, maybe a little like a small bump here and there, but it's not going to take down like bulks of acrylic. If you feel like you need to still take down a lot of acrylic, then I recommend using a carbide bit first before the sanding band to um, take down any bulk that you might have. The sanding band should not be used to take down bulk. Once you've sanded your nails, you can go ahead and buff them out. This is going to be the last step. Um, since you did the sanding band prior, um, a very fine buffer should be fine just to clean up any little file marks that might have been left over. After this, you can go ahead and either polish, top coat, or do whatever design your client might want. The nails are nice and clean, fully sanded, and they should be all even. Cuticles fully sealed as well. So um, again, that's going to be it. And all of these products that I use are available on my website. Nail Prof Products, the website is dreasnails.com. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know in the comments what other types of videos you'd like to see.